YouTube, this is William. Just want to do a follow up on my uh, my tarp, my bed sheet tarp, and uh, kind of answer some questions that I've been getting. One of the main ones is, is it gummy or is it tacky? No, it uh, it kind of feels like the um, the tarp, the tent smith's tarp. It has about the same weight. Um, it just has the, about the same feel as the tent smith. Um, I understand that they use a 300 thread count uh, Egyptian cotton and this is a 350 so it's about the same weight. Um, what does it feel like? Uh, well like I say it feels like the um, the tent smith tarp. If you, if you don't know what that feels like it the, the thinness of it feels like a seal nylon believe it or not. It really does. It, um, it, it, the light penetrates it like a seal nylon, and um, it just feels like it has a silicone rubber coating on it, is what it feels like. Um, does it smell? Well, there is a slight bit of smell on, from the linseed oil, but I understand that after um, a week that that smell is supposed to dissipate is what what the forum said. Um, the other thing, is it durable? Well, <laughs> so far it's lasted almost uh, three days. <laughs> so it, it really depends on your, your sewing, I think, um, how you sew it. And there's probably a better way to sew it. If you wanted to go around it and double it, double the edges with another material or fold the sheet in like this, just so that you can double the edges, then that's probably a better idea. But uh, I wanted to use all of the, the the length and width that I could. So if you wanted to get, say, a queen size or a full size, and fold the, the, the edges in so that you have a border around it to give it strength, or you could put some backing in between that and give it even more strength. So there's, there's better ways to do this. This was just quick, down and dirty, easy. I wanted to see if this worked before I, I put a lot of time into it. And it works. Believe me, it works. Okay, the other thing is, um, well, they, the, let's talk about durability on the, the actual waterproofing. Now, in the forum where I got this idea, the gentleman said that, that he had been using this and he had equipment that had this, this, uh, this waterproofing on it for 15 years. And he's never had to do anything to it. It still repels water just like the day he applied it. So from that, it sounds like it is very durable treatment. Once you do it, you don't have to do anything else to it. Okay? As far as the treatment. Now, the material that you put it on um, may get worn and frayed. I don't know. It's just, he's talking about the treatment, I assume. What materials can you apply this to? Well, some people have said that they use this on gun stocks. They've been using it on the gun stocks their whole life. This is the linseed oil in uh, mineral spirits mixed 50-50. So, I don't know. I mean, it, maybe it could be applied to leather. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Uh, but it is a just a, a linseed oil based waterproofing. The mineral spirits is the drying agent. It's what dries the mineral, uh, the uh, linseed oil. If you don't use mineral spirits or some type of my, uh, drying agent, then linseed oil will take forever to dry. And in some cases, like in a climate hot, hot weather, it's been known to stay gummy forever. So keep that in mind. But using the mineral spirits, it dries. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, the forum recommended that you apply this, if you're going to apply it to a canvas, to 10 ounces or, or, or better canvas because the weave is a lot tighter. If you use the drop cloths, a lot of people say I don't want to use the drop cloths, which you can, but you got to get the 10 ounce drop cloths. Okay, the 8 ounce he specifically said in the forum, do not use because the weave is not tight enough. So if you're going to use canvas, use 10 ounces or better, okay? If you're going to use cotton, 
I don't know that you have to use Egyptian cotton, but it is my understanding that Egyptian cotton is lighter, it has a tighter weave, and is stronger than normal cotton. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. That's the reason I chose Egyptian cotton. Now you can, uh, as long as the weave is tight and you prep it properly, that is, wash it in hot water and dry it on high heat to expand those fibers and close up all of those little gaps in the in the in the weave. Then it should be okay. But again, I'm not an expert. This is my first time. Okay, uh, I'm just going by what what I've been told uh, on the forum. So, um, what would I do different? Um, what I would do different is I would, if I was going to use a natural dye, I would use some type of stabilizer. Now, I've heard that some people put a handful of nails in, in their bucket of, uh, of dye, of rusty nails. They claim that that's a good stabilizer. I've also um, had one person tell me that they use vinegar in their natural dye as a stabilizer. They didn't say how much, but I would assume just it wouldn't take much. Um, maybe a half a cup or so. I don't know, but you just have to play around with that or ask some questions from somebody who's who's actually tried that. But you have to use a, a stabilizer in your oh, excuse me. You have to use a stabilizer in your um, in your natural dyes. Now you can use pigment. Go to your your uh, Home Improvement Center, Lowe's, um, Home Depot, those type places into the concrete section and you can get concrete dyes for stamped concrete. And it has a powdered uh, dyes that you can get. And I think they have charcoal, um, a reddish color, they have a sand color and, uh, I, and as far as the mixing it, it depends on how what shade you want. You just have to go by feel. If, uh, if you want dark, then put more in it. If you want lighter, then put less in it. Okay? But I would, if I was going to do that again and not use a natural dye, then I would apply that and just pour it into your linseed and mineral spirit mix. Okay? And that mix is 50-50 on the mineral spirits and the linseed oil. Half and half. You put a cup of linseed, you'll have a cup of mineral spirits. Okay? So, the tie-outs, we've talked about folding it under, and if you had enough material, that would be the better option. Um, the, uh, I think the, now time will tell, folks. I mean, you know, it's been hanging up since I applied the treatment, so I haven't really tried it out. You can't try something out for until you used it for several months or a year or so. But the, uh, just from looking at this, 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 this lamp wick, that is the way to go. <laughs> I mean, I think that this is this is going to be some fabulous tie-outs. Now, I wanted to use tie-outs instead of grommets because grommets, when they rip, they're done. But this, if if the thread starts ripping, or then I can I can re-sew this. I can repair this in the field. Grommets, you can't do that. Okay, unless you take tools with you and all that. And I didn't want to do that. So, so tie-outs is the reason I went with tie-outs. Why did I make it this small? Well, it's not really small. I wanted something that was that was compact, that would fit into my, my haversack, that I could use as a microclimate. It's a windbreak, it's rain gear, like I said in, in part three, that you can wrap up in this thing and um, use it as a tarp, throw it over the, the top of a deer blind. Um, it's just a microclimate for a scout is what I wanted. I have a 9x9 nine nine oil cloth. I have a 7x7 seven seven oil cloth. I wanted something smaller and compact. That's the reason I used a bed sheet instead of a canvas because I wanted it light. Two pounds? You got socks that weigh more than that. <laughs> okay? So that's the reason I went with the bed sheet and the size that I did. The other question was, am I concerned about uh, you know, it says on the can, spontaneous uh, uh, caution, uh, this material has been known to spontaneously combust. 
Well, once it dries, then it will not do that. Okay? Once the linseed dries, then it will not spontaneously combust. Now, while it's wet, if you fold it up and let heat generate in those fibers, then yes, it will spontaneously combust or has been known to do that. But once it dries, that is not a problem. Is it heat resistant? No. It is not heat resistant. If a spark hits it, it will probably roll off. For a seal nylon, if it hits it, there's a hole immediately. But if you put it too close to a flame, it will catch on fire. Okay? So it is better than seal nylon or any of those type of tarps, but it is not as good as fire-treated canvas. Totally different things. Okay? So do not get this next to a flame because it will more than likely catch on fire. Alright? So I have expanded my knowledge, my vast knowledge of this product and lessons learned. Um, but <laughs> if anyone wants a cheap, reliable tarp, all cloth tarp, for the durability, the quietness, the, um, <coughs> excuse me, and the, uh, ease of having a tarp like this, then I recommend going this route. This this has been a phenomenal. I, it even surprised me at how well this works. How easy it is. Even I can do it. If I can do it, you guys can do it. Now, <clears throat> is it as good quality as, say, the other brands like Tent Smiths or Deer Creek uh, Wilderness Outfitters? No. No, it's not the same quality because they use better, better products. They use uh, higher quality. Uh, cloth. They have better machines. They have better thread. I mean, <clears throat> they um, they do a better better job on the on the the um, tying the, the ties on there, the, the tie outs. So it's not the same quality. I mean, you get what you pay for, it, folks. If you want something that will last forever and hand down to your grandkids, go buy one of them. They're expensive, but they. They're worth it. There's a lot of work goes into those. But if you want something cheap that you don't mind getting a little dirty, getting a little damaged, then this may be a better option for you. Okay? And you can go out and, and build four or five of these for the price that you can pay for one canvas or one um, tent smiths or, or wilderness outfits. But it's your call, your choice. Okay? Well, I, I really appreciate you guys um, joining me on this project. Um, the responses have been phenomenal, and I appreciate that. I really do all your comments, all your questions, um, and uh, your support, all the new subscriptions. I, I've gotten tons of new subscriptions over this, and if I'd known that, I'd done this a long time ago. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, you know, it's just... It's amazing what it feels. It feels, it feels like uh, a seal nylon tarp. That's what it really feels like. It's amazing. All right, so I'm gonna leave it up uh, for about a week and um, let the linseed smell dissipate. It's already going out. It's it's really hard to smell at this point. It's uh, been three days, so. There's no doubt that it will dissipate, like uh, like the, the guy in the forum said. Because everything he said so far has been right on the button, so I have no reason to doubt him. Um, but again, thanks folks for joining me on this. I appreciate it. All your support, your subscriptions, your purchases, your orders, your uh, for knives. And, and am I going to sell these? No. That's another question. <laughs> no, I'm not going to sell these. I have... I have enough trouble getting knife orders out, so this is this is personal thing. This this is my personal thing. So, um, but I do appreciate all your knife orders, your uh, your support, and until the next one, you guys get out there and try this. Do these little things like this, and and videotape it. Put it on YouTube. Put it out there for somebody else to learn and, and uh, enjoy. And uh, until the next one, you guys be safe. Take plenty of band aids, lots of knives. 
and uh, take care. Bye.